so electrostatics quiz two, mark your own. Here we go. Hopefully I stalled long enough for some of you to cheat. It says, given the following power plate, now, uh, be really, really careful. Emily, what's the voltage of the top plate? What's the voltage of the bottom one? I think the change in voltage is 750 volts, right? So just be careful, that's what I'm gonna use. Uh, what's the magnitude and direction of the electric field between the plates? So the magnitude, we said that electric field between plates is the change in voltage divided by how far apart they are. It's gonna be 750 divided by 0 0.055. Seven hundred and fifty divided by point zero five five. The electric field is uh, one three thirteen thousand six hundred. One point three six times ten to the fourth volts per meter or newtons per coulomb. That's another way to measure electric field. Uh, direction. Okay. There's a little positive right there. Electric field direction asks which way would a positive want to move if it could. Which way would it want to move? Brett did this, see how she covered both her bases? She went. That's like doing this on a true and false test, right? What do you think it is, mister? Yeah, uh -huh, nice try. So, Brett, which direction did you truly mean by your little going up, loop down? down? How do you know? Because for electric field, we ask ourselves a question. What do we ask? Which way would a want to move it could? And positives want to move away from positive toward negative. One mark for the magnitude, one mark for the direction. B. Suppose we put an electron right at location A, right at the bottom of the diagram. What will its final speed be when it hits location B at the top of the diagram? First of all, will it want to move? Yeah, it wants to get away from the negatives and it wants to move towards the positives. So it's gonna go rocketing upwards. Did I ask for velocity in this question, Matt? In number two, in B, one B. I said speed, that's a subtle hint saying scalar, try energies first. I'm gonna say this, you know what? The amount of kinetic energy beforehand plus the amount of potential energy beforehand equals the amount of kinetic energy afterwards and the amount of potential energy afterwards, except I think I can assume that it starts at rest and at the end, it's used up all of its energy. It's fallen down to the ground. In fact, this is exactly the same physics as dropping an object and having a gravitational field pull you to the Earth. Only the electron, Andrew, is falling up. And it's not gravity, it's electrical force. Potential energy. QV equals a half mv final squared. This is the equation that has two v's in it. This is where I really use the wings so I know which one is voltage and which one is speed. Uh, they want v final. I think v final is going to be times by 2 q v divide by the mass square root. I think that's right. So let's see. The final speed that this electron is going to travel at is going to be Two. Oh, they didn't tell me the charge. Oh, wait a minute, it's an electron. I know, I'm, I'm supposed to know that. It's on my sheet. It's the elementary charge. 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. The voltage is 750. All over the mass. Oh, mass of an electron, 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31, and then square root that. 2 times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 times 750 divided by 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31. Square root of that. Dope. You get 1.62 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. You get 1.6 times 10 to the 7? Mm -hmm. 
terms of marking, I would probably give you uh, one mark if I saw this, one mark for that, one mark for that, and one mark for the answer. I like this question. I like this question. Oh, I think on the test, though, I don't have it starting at rest. I think I have it coming in with some initial kinetic energy as well. Oh, okay, it's another half mv squared, the initial squared. Oh, something like number two, I guess. I must have been thinking about the test when I created this quiz. Suppose the electron is traveling at initial speed of 2.1 times 10 to the fifth meters per second. It enters an area between two parallel plates where the potential difference is shown below. Will it want to speed up? Yeah, when it gets here, it wants to get to the positive. What will the final speed of the electron be? Okay. Kinetic energy initial plus potential energy initial equals kinetic energy final plus potential energy final. Mitchell, are any of these zero? What? Oh, you spotted that. Did you? Good for you. Okay. Mitchell, what is kinetic energy initial? How would I write that? A half mv initial squared plus... And what will I write for potential energy initial, Mitchell? Oh, pray tell. Oh, QV. Very good. Equals... Oh, let's put my wings on there because I got multiple of these. And I think this is going to be a half mv final squared. Is that right, Mitchell? Do the m's cancel this time? Nope, not in this situation. Okay. Now what? Well, I want to get V final by itself. You know, yeah. here's my preference. I think the first thing that I would do is I would go times by 2, times by 2, times by 2, because that get rid gets rid of those. That gives me a new equation of MVI squared plus 2QV equals M vf squared. Now you don't have to. This is right on my borderline, Nicole, of will I get the v by itself or not. I would have no problem if you just started crunching numbers and then divided your answer by a half and divided by the mass of an electron and square rooted. In other words, if you went to numbers now, this is right about as this is about as much work as I want to do to try and get a letter by itself. But since I've come this far, I think v final is going to be the square root of m v initial squared plus 2q v divided by m. Is that right, Mitchell? Excellent. Mitchell, what did you put in for the mass, oh pray tell? Oh, you're so clever. And what was the initial velocity, Mitchell? I scroll down. Squared plus 2 times 1.6 times 10 to negative 19. I need to extend my square root, don't I? Times, what's the voltage? To 150? Big square root. Dunk. All over. 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31. Mitchell, my friend, did you get an answer? You did? Oh, I'm so proud of you. What'd you get? Meters per second. Brett, did you get the same answer? You did? Wow, imagine that. Um, for seven marks, I would probably go like this. One mark, one mark. One mark, one mark, one mark, one, two, three, four, five, and probably two marks for your answer, something like that. Give yourself a score out of uh, two, six, uh, out of 13. Uh, looking at number two, okay, how could I muck this up a little bit more? Um, Instead of telling you the initial speed, could I tell you the initial kinetic energy? In fact, that would make it easier because you could just plunk a number right there. Or if you wanted to, you could use initial kinetic energy to find the initial speed by going times by two, divide by the mass square root. Oh, no, I know the initial speed. Or, or uh, could I give you the final speed and ask you how fast was it must have been coming in at? Sure. Or, or, 
Or, Katie, could I tell you the initial speed and the final speed and say, what does the voltage need to be? Sure. So tr thinking of ways I can mix and match. Give yourself a score out of 13, please. Put your names on it. No, wait a minute. I won't see you between now and the quiz, will I? So instead, let's do our routine of the people on the ends of the row. Tear out a piece of paper, put your name on it, write your score, but hang on to the quiz. So, last day, we started circuitry. We looked at basic circuit. Pardon me? You didn't get enough handouts? It's because I didn't want you to learn. Secretly, I've always wanted to. So let's try that again. Lesson when we looked at basic circuit concepts. I introduced to you the idea of current. We said that current was how fast the charges were flowing, the rate of flow of charge. Current was defined as Q divided by T. It's coulombs per second. It's like a speed, sort of. And then we introduced to you Ohm's law. We said that Ohm's law, V equals I times R, this is the one we're going to be flogging to death in this unit. We'll be using this about 90% of the time. This is the one that you'll end up memorizing it. And also, please note that not only does V equals I times R, I equals V over R, or R equals V over I, you can get any, all three of these by itself. You're going to hear me say frequently, hey, if you know two, you know three. If you know two of those, you know the third one. And that's going to be much of our goal in solving a circuit, Sean. We're going to commit ourselves to just finding any two pieces of information about any location in the circuit. And then we know the third one. Okay. We gave you the analogy of the ski hill. We said that a circuit can be thought of as a ski run, where the battery raises the charges to a higher voltage, a higher potential energy level, just like a chairlift raises your potential energy. And where the resistors are like the ski runs, they lower the voltage, They uh, just like a ski run lowers your height. I gave you a couple of questions to try. I'll start out by saying, were there any of these that you wanted me to go over? Otherwise, we'll move on to part two. Sensing that none of you have done the homework, don't fall behind on this. This is actually, most kids find this unit very straightforward unless they try and cram it. But if you keep up with the homework, you should find this pretty good. Then let's jump to, now lesson two is a continuation of the last one anyways, so maybe it'll clear up any questions you had if you were too sheepish to ask. Lesson two. Emily, up here, my dear. Thank you. We need to also define a third thing. We have voltage. We have current, we have resistance. The fourth thing is power. In fact, I said to you about 30 seconds ago, if you know two, you know three things. Actually, if you know any two things, you know four things, power. So recall that as charges flow through a circuit device like a resistor or a light bulb, they lose energy due to collisions with the atoms in a wire. We start out at a higher voltage, some of the energy is transformed to heat, we end up at a lower voltage. Since this energy lost, is transformed into heat energy, the energy lost by the charges is related to voltage drop because potential energy equals QV. Example one, it says, fill in the steps below to find an expression for the rate at which the charges lose energy, for the rate at which work is being done. Power. Power is energy loss over time. Power is work over time. So this is energy loss, this is how much power is going from the circuit into the device. That's energy that's lost from the circuit that's going into Connor lighting the bulb or running the iPod or whatever. Well, power equals Q change in voltage over time. Yes? Three second yawn? I think you can yawn longer if you really try. Is that okay so far? Now, here's what I want you to notice. I can rewrite this as power equals, I'm gonna move the change in voltage over and I'm gonna put the T right underneath the Q and I'm gonna capitalize the Q. Because what did we say last day? What is Q over T? That was one of two equations we did last day. And Brett, if you're not sure, if you glance right over here, I think it gives you a little hint. Turns out power is, although we're going to write it as, I think it's VI on your formula sheet. 
But you can remember it IV intravenous, whatever you want to think. Power equals VI. Okay? Power is the energy drop per coulomb of charge times the number of charges that are going past. That's the electric definition of power. That started out with our work over time from, good gosh, Andrew, physics 11. And now we're into power in terms of electricity. So when you say a bulb is a 60 watt bulb, you're saying that it's using, if, it's, if one amp is flowing through it, it's using 60 volts every second. 60 watts. So the rate at which electrical energy is transformed into heat energy is given by This is called Joule's Law. Named after a scientist whose last name was? Joule. Yeah, he even got a unit named after him, too. Now, it's funny, Sean. This is the one that shows up on your formula sheet. This is the one that I almost use the least. There's actually two other versions. Because V equals I times R, You can write this as power equals I times R times I, because V is IR. Uh, what's an easier way to write I times I? This one's not on your formula sheet, but it's pretty easy to derive. I, use, I end up using this one the most. Oh, there's a, th a third one. Connor, instead of getting the V by itself, can you get the I by itself? Okay, so the other thing I could have written this is as power equals V, V over R, because that's I. But Connor, what's a nicer way to write V, V? Yeah, okay. I hardly ever use this one. But here's my point. With either of these equations and Ohm's law of V equals I times R, there's four things in any circuit at any location. Voltage, current, resistance, and power. If you know any two, you know all four. And thankfully, they're straight, cross-multiply, easy equations, nothing fancy. Oh, if you solving for a current, don't forget the square root. If you're solving for a voltage, don't forget the square root on these two. Um, being technical here, in finding the energy lost by charges, we really should use the work energy theorem. Work is change in kinetic plus change in potential. But once you flip the switch on, the charges are all holding hands and they're moving at a constant speed. If they're moving at a constant speed, what is your change in kinetic going to be? Zero. We're going to ignore it. So we're ignoring the split millisecond when the switch gets flicked on and the split millisecond when the switch gets flicked off, which is why they yell at you when you're turning light bulbs off and on, off and on, off and on, off and on. That, that's a different equation. It uses more power. Okay. So example three, turn the page. Find the current in your house wires if you plug in a 1400 watt dryer. Hair dryer. Okay. Well, they've told me that the voltage is 120. They've told me that the power is 1400. And they want me to find the current. Yeah, I'm actually deficking for the first time in a while, listing all my data. Okay, what equation am I going to use? I'm going to use Joule's law. How much current will be flowing through this plug? Well, it's going to be the power divided by the voltage. It's going to be 1400 divided by 120. How many amps of current will a hairdryer pull out of a plug?
enough to kill you. And almost every electric appliance Mitsu has not a voltage rating, not an amperage rating. It has a power rating. They tell you how many watts of power. The reason is all of our plugs are standards. Every time you plug something in, you're getting 120 volts. Actually, I think I said yesterday, it's 113.4, but we round it to 120 for nice round numbers. You get 120 volts, which means that depending on how much power, they'll all draw a different amount of current. Generally, the more, using a new keyboard, heat and object moves, the more power it requires. The more heat that an object moves around, the more power it requires, because we said that this is all showing up as heat in the resistor. I need to write that down. There's a reason for that. Let's presume I don't just put things on here for no reason. Oh, you know why? Because it is fair game, it was fair game on the provincial and it will happen on your tests, for me to say to you, uh, which of these is the most likely power rating for a microwave? And I'll give you four different wattages to pick, or something like this. Example four, a mix and a match. It says, mix and match the following appliances with their approximate power ratings. It gives you a bunch of wattages here gives you a bunch of appliances here. Well, which of these moves the most amount of heat? And here's your hint. The device that has the highest power here actually requires a special power outlet in your house. You may or may not know that, but it has a special outlet. I heard it. Yeah, your clothes dryer. If you ever pull your clothes dryer away from the wall, that's a 220 volt outlet. That's one of two 220 volt outlets. Your stove also probably has a 220 volt power outlet. Those are the two devices that use the most power. So which of these is the most power here? You know what? A clothes dryer pulls 4,800 watts. A clothes dryer pulls 4,800 watts. Um, which of these do you think would generate the least amount of heat? Pardon me? Clock? Yeah, I'm kind of, I think I'm looking at either a clock or the kitchen fan, but I think the kitchen fan probably, you know, I felt those engines, they do get a little bit warm, or a little electric clock, I don't feel any heat coming from there. You know what? That's why those clocks can run on a battery for so long. So the clock on the wall behind me, that battery gets changed like once a year, even though it goes 24 seven. Okay. Which of these do you think moves the next largest amount of heat and would therefore have the next largest amount of power? Computer? Do you burn yourself when you touch a computer? No. Like, um, you know what? I think the hot water heater, because there you're not only moving a large amount, of, like the temperature is big, but also that's a lot of water. That's got to pull a lot of energy to do that. And yeah, it would have a wattage of about 3,200. By the way, do you guys know what the wattage is on a, oh, average light bulb. We can do that one. What's the wattage on an average light bulb? 60 watts. I'm assuming you've all put in at least one light bulb in your life. How many students have to take to change a light bulb? One. Yeah. How many ADHD kids does it take to change a light bulb? Let's go bike riding. That's the punchline. And I had an ADHD kid tell me that joke and I laughed my guts out. He was very proud of that one. Hey, uh, you guys know what the wattage is on a microwave? A large microwave. Yeah, 1,200. The bigger ones, 1,200. The smaller ones, usually 600 to 800. And the amount of power determines how long it'll take your food to cook. That's why a bigger microwave can cook so much faster than a smaller microwave.
Well, what do you think uses more power? What do you think generates more heat, a computer or a kitchen fan? Yeah, a computer takes about 800 watts. Kitchen fan be about a 150 watt motor. Okay. The rule of thumb is, or I've seen them as a question ask, which of the following appliances would use the most power? And they'll give you four to pick from. Just ask, well, which one moves the most heat around? That's going to use the most power. Clothes dryer and stove are the two biggest. Refrigerator fairly big as well, because it's pulling cold, so it's, it's moving heat around by yanking heat out of a situation. B. Electrical energy. Since power is energy over time, we can solve for energy and we can find actually the amount of energy is equal to power times time. Where power is VI or I squared R or V squared over R. If you actually want to find out how many joules of energy an appliance is using because you're a nerd and you like to know these things, multiply the wattage times how long you've got it turned on for. <coughs> In other words, a 1200 watt microwave. Oh, he brings a note. Whoop. Here's the problem. So we said a microwave pulls 1200 watts of power. That means in one second it uses 1200 joules. In 60 seconds, which is a standard amount of, that would be 1200 times 60, uh, like if you're microwaving something for 10 minutes, you're using a lot of energy. A joule is too small. So the joule is a relatively small unit of electrical energy. Most often for power, for electricity, we use a larger unit, the kilowatt hour. Can you see power times time in the equation though? Power times time in the equation? That's what your electric bills are. They're in kilowatt hours. That's what the big fuss right now is about the new BC Hydro smart meters. If you're reading the paper, a lot of people are claiming, hey, my bill tripled or quadrupled when you put your smart meter in. And BC Hydro is saying, well, we were undercharging you. I don't know. They've got a lot of complaints. There could be something wrong with the devices. But regardless, one kilowatt hour is 1,000 watts times 3,600 seconds. One kilowatt hour is 3.6 times 10 to the 6 joules. A typical household uses between 1,000 and 3,000 kilowatt hours in a month. In other words, a typical household uses between, oh, let's go split the difference. 2,000 times 3.6 times 10 to the sixth. That's how many joules of energy most of your houses use in a month, which is why we don't use joules on your, on your BC Hydro bills, because that would be crazy. Okay. So... Suppose you leave a 60 watt bulb on all month, 30 days, 24 hours a day. How much energy will it use in joules? Well, energy is power times time. Brandon, what's the wattage of this bulb? 60, you say? The time is 30 days times 24 hours times 60 minutes in an hour times 60 seconds in a minute. If you left a light bulb on for an entire month, all day, all night, how many joules of energy would it use? Someone crunch that for me, please. By the way, go 60 cubed times 30 times 24. Wait, faster to type, yes? Emily, what'd you get? One point six times ten to the eighth. Anybody else? One point six even or one point one point five 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 okay. We'll use that one point five five two for the next calculations. Uh, it says repeat in kilowatt hours. So if I wanted to do this in kilowatt hours, I would go one point five five two times ten to the eighth joules times what was the conversion factor? We said one kilowatt hour, hang on, let's do it, use the proper units, one lowercase k, uppercase w for watts, lowercase h for hours, is the same as 3.6 times 10 to the 6th joules, 
So can you take the number on your calculator, Emily, and divide it by 3.6 times 10 to the 6th? Forty three point two kilowatt hours of energy. By the way, again, even though it has watts in it, this is energy because it's power times time. C. How much would that cost? Well, if they charge six cents per kilowatt hour, it would be point zero six, there's six cents times forty three point two. We are lucky here in BC because we have hydroelectric power, which makes electric energy cheap and relatively clean if you ignore the environmental damage of building the dams. Although we're finding we can't because it's really hampered the BC salmon fishing industry because the salmon can't spawn the way they used to. How much? So can you give it to me in dollars and cents? So how about to two decimal places? Is that right? Is she right? I don't know. Is that correct? Yeah. Which actually isn't much. We don't turn lights off here in BC to save money. We do it because we want to reduce our greenhouse effect. We want to reduce our environmental impact. However, this could be changing. Uh, about five years ago, six years ago, California, which you think of as a major industrialized state, was going through some serious energy crises. They had rolling blackouts. So from, for example, on Thursdays from 7 p.m. till 10 p.m., you guys will be without power. Make sure you got everything in the freezer and keep your freezer closed. And they did that for the whole summer because it was a hot summer so the air conditioners were going cranked like crazy and they didn't have enough power to go around. It's never happened here in BC yet. But Katie, what do you think? Do you feel 10 years from now, thinking about the proliferation of technology, will we be wanting to use more electricity or less electricity 10 years from now? Uh, yeah, absolutely more. What, Mitchell? Uh, but you know what? They can only make it so efficient. There's a limit. Because you, you, you've got to move the electrons around. You've got to get some work done, right? Speaking of, Mitchell, that's a wonderful segue into part C, efficiency. How clever of you. Remember, efficiency was defined as the ratio of energy or power, you output, to energy or power, input. Kara, that always confused me. I always remembered it was the smaller number divided by the bigger number because you're not allowed to be more than 100% efficient in my universe. You can't win a Nobel Prize. Although, if any of you do, please mention me in your speech. Efficiency is power out divided by power in. So let's look at a light bulb here. Example six says, oh, by the way, then we go times 100% to make it a percentage. I guess I should mention that. Uh, a 60 watt light bulb is connected to 120 volts, so it's connected to a standard power outlet. It produces 58 joules of light and heat every second. It's left on for eight hours. Electricity costs six cents per kilowatt hour find the current through the bulb, the resistance of the bulb, the efficiency of the bulb, the energy used, and how much it costs. Okay. Well, they told me the power, they told me the voltage, they want the current. Do I have an equation that has P, V, and I in it? So current is power divided by voltage. Oh, I can do this in my head. 60 divided by 120, you know what? It's using 0 0.50 amps. 
It's using a half an amp. Still enough to kill you. B. The resistance. Well, how many amps are going through the bulb? 0.5. How many volts are going through the bulb? 120. Oh. I don't think I need a calculator for that either. What's 120 divided by 0.5 divided by a half? Dividing by a half, same as multiplying by. You know what? This is a 240 ohm bulb. C. How efficient is this? Well, is... Power out divided by power in. This bulb is using 60 watts. How much are we getting out? Well, it says it produces what? Oh, this is watts, that's joules. Wait a minute, it doesn't just say 58 joules, it says, read the whole phrase to me, 58 joules of? Ah, did they say every second? 58 joules per second. Isn't a joule per second a watt? That's how we defined it. So now my units do match. Times 100%. How efficient is this bulb? Now, if you are only interested in the light energy, it's terribly inefficient because most of the energy goes into heat. But that's not really wasted if the bulb is indoors. If the bulb is indoors, that heat goes into heating your house in the winter. You get it back. Your furniture bill is lower by however many joules of heat the light bulb gave off. Outdoor bulbs are very inefficient because you're heating up the sky, which we probably don't want to do. D. Sean, what does D want us to find? The energy used, okay, we said that the energy is the amount of power times how long you leave it on. So the amount of power it's pulling is 60 watts. How long does this question say we left the bulb on for? Got to read. Oh, eight hours. So eight times how many seconds in one hour? 3,600, right? It's 60 minutes, 60 seconds, yeah, 3,600. How many joules of energy? Uh, you know what? Let's change that to kilowatt hours. So it's going to be times, uh, let's see, one kilowatt hour was 3.6 times 10 to the sixth joules. How many kilowatt hours? 0.48 even? Or pretty close? 0.48 kilowatt hour. It's just shy of half a kilowatt hour. So, how much does it cost? Six cents per kilowatt hour times 0.48. About three cents, yeah? 0.48 is close to a half, so it's half of six. Just under three cents. Again, BC, we're lucky. We have pretty cheap power, although we built all, most of these dams back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s when we didn't understand the environmental damage, and we are feeling that now. There's a resistance, a reluctance to build more. But 
once you've built those dams, hydroelectric afterwards, once you've destroyed the environment, has very minimal impact on the environment. You're not continuously producing, for example, like a coal burning plant, continuously producing greenhouse gases. I still think the best way to go is nuclear, but someday. Turn the page. What's your homework? Well, you can work on the electrostatics review. I'm giving you about a full half hour to work on that. Otherwise, though, also, number one, Number two, number three, I'm going to pause there, just one, two, and three.